Okay, so what I'm going to show um, the next instrument I'm going to show. Let's see if I can adjust the uh, exposure. Um, is the very first instrument I made. Um, it's a Red Mountain Cedar back and sides, uh, Engelmann spruce top. Um, the binding is an interesting binding. You know, start at the back. Let's so what I've done is I I. I wasn't quite happy with the guitar, more of the details. I didn't change, I kind of stripped it all down and did some things. I didn't change the basic structure though, I was always happy with the sound of it, like really happy with the sound of it. I was so excited when I first um, made it. And of course for me, the sound is what's the most important, right? But at the same time, a beautiful sound is nice. But a beautiful instrument is nice too. Um, so here's what I did. I thinned the neck down. And on my website I'll, I'll put down what the, the numbers are. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Thinned it down to, uh, I think, a better thickness. Anyway, the other thing I did was, um, I originally didn't have um, a center strip in this. I um, just had it, I thought, oh, the wood is so beautiful, I'll just have it meet in the center, you know? I thought, oh, the incredible grain here, like, look, at it's so wavy. You know, I would pick the waviest grain, like a really wavy grain for my first instrument, right? If I go the easy route, <laughs> it's hard to bend the sides when it's that wavy, I find. Um, anyway, so what I did was I put in this uh, center strip that I made with layers of maple and bloodwood. Um, I've done similar things in other instruments, eh? Like on my on my flamenca negra that I have still here. Um, so I thought that put that in. I really love it. So basically, I, I I cut a channel in the back and then laid it in and then, then brought it down and did a sim similar thing in the tail here. Similar idea. Um, the binding. Yes, my Appaloosa binding. I've done this a couple times now. And of course I would do this on my first one. Again, maple and, and uh, bloodwood, which I, that's why I chose the back strip to reflect that. Um, and I've also got some Maidang in here, like that bit right here. This is Maidang. Uh, yeah. Okay, back to the top. Now the bridge. The bridge, 12-hole bridge as usual. Put a new saddle in. Um, I also widened the, I widened the saddle slot. I thought the sa original saddle was a little, for me, a little too narrow. I like a little bit wider. But I also made this with the, the grooves between the strings is, is what I've been doing lately. Um, the, the wood of the bridge is a wood called Maidak. And it's super special. Of course, I used it not knowing what it would sound like. And it's a great bridge wood. It's in the same realm as rosewood, I'd say, you know, in terms of density. So I thought it would be no problem. But you can see you've got the Maidak bridge here. And then if we look up here at the head plate, also Maidak. Now, my friends who own the house I live in, P. Ad and, and Gung. Uh, P. Ad loves, is a real wood person, you know, he loves wood. And he gave me this piece of Maidak, and I've used it for different instruments. And he said to me, you know, you'll probably never see this wood ever again. It's so rare, right? And it was just a log lying around. You know, no one, probably it's been around for decades um, that he had lying around the house here actually and uh, yeah it's so beautiful and it makes it very rare so the thing is when I do uh, instruments and I use that wood I use them for for 
would for pieces that I want to keep. Like for instance, I have, um, oh yes, I have, I have uh, this instrument in here. It's an eagle, eagle, and it's made with a big piece of that mitac. And I, I kept that, um, I kept that. That's not for sale. I kept it for myself because it's, it's uh, in honor of my horse Dakota, who's not with us anymore. So sadly. Anyway, so usually the my rack instruments I keep for myself, right? But this one, the thing is, for this one, instruments I feel need to be played, right? And and the uh, the width here at the bridge is I think it's fifty seven between the strings. Yep, fifty seven. Fifty seven millimeters. For me, uh, sixty millimeters feels better. You wouldn't think that half a million millimeter would make that much difference, but it does. I find it does. Anyway, so for me, it's not ideal for playing, right? So I find I don't play it a lot. And like I said, I really think instruments need to be played. So I thought, oh, I'll put it up for sale um, and see if anyone wants it. I haven't quite figured out the price yet, but it, uh, it'll, it'll be um, lower than my other instruments just because it's my first instrument, you know? Um, the fingerboard is Mechasar Ebony, which is what I always use. Um, the frets are just your standard nickel silver. Nickel silver. This, I don't even know if there's nickel or silver in it. Anyway, that's what they call it. Just the usual stuff. The neck is really nice. Uh, Port Orford Cedar. Yeah. Really nice wood to work with, actually. You know, it's pretty straightforward. The there's no, I don't have any uh, veneer sandwiched between the head plate. This, the, the shape of my headstock is more or less what I do all the time. Uh, I came up with this for this instrument and I've kept using it. Um, the nut is uh, pretty, pretty standard. Uh, well, the, the fingerboard width that the nut is 52 mil, right? Um, which is pretty standard. One other thing that's a bit different is the bracing. This is, I, I use a Santos Hernandez 1934 plan as my base that I pl play from, you know? And with this first instrument, and, and a few more, like a two more, more, I basically did a pretty close to what the plan was, you know, the way Santos Hernandez met it. So I've got my harmonic bar horizontal here. The last few instruments I've been angling the, this bar a little bit here. So there's a bit more space in the bass area, a bit less space in the in the treble area. Um, and and really, with every instrument, I experiment a bit. I do things a little bit differently, um, learning all the time. I love that, right? Uh, one, it's hard to, to know for certain about w like one one change in an instrument. It's hard to know for certain what differences it makes, but. Going by my other instruments with the angled harmonic bar and this instrument, which is the last instrument I have actually with the horizontal bar, um, it feels like there's more on this instrument, there's more uh, harmonics going on, we'll say. The other ones feel uh, cleaner, cleaner. Uh, for what it's worth, you know what I mean? Um, hard to say. Um, it becomes it becomes so uh, nebulous, right? It's, it's what you like. Anyway, uh, for my flamencos, I, I do think I like the other sound better, but I love this sound too, right? And I'm even thinking my goal this year is to, is to add classicals into my repertoire. And um, I'm probably the first ones I'll do of that will be the horizontal harmonic bar. I just think with the classicals, I might be wanting a bit more harmonic range, you know? Um, oh, here's the, here's my rosette. First rosette I ever made. You can see that if you just, if you had, happen to see the other new video I have, the uh, my latest rosette is very similar in theme, right? And uh, I mentioned in another video that this rosette reminds me a lot of the Canadian artist David Milne. Really uh, spent a lot of time looking at his work. Uh, he was active in the early first half of the 1900s, I guess? I don't know, actually. Anyway, yeah, bloodwood and maple. That's all that's in that rosette. Yeah. That's 
have another look at the back strip. Oh, I need to point out some things, right? First instrument's a learning instrument. Um, and I want to point out inconsistencies so people don't feel I'm trying to pull one over on them. Now, on this one, you can I can feel where the back strip is. It dips down a little bit. Like, I don't even know how much it would be. Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe like half a millimeter or something. Um, I could have sanded this, the rest of the, the back down to make it flush, right? But I wasn't too sure. I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to thin the back out that much, you know? So there's that, there's that there, right? It's, it doesn't affect the sound or strength or anything, right? And uh, it doesn't bother me at all. But, you know, just so you know, um, that's how that is. Um, the other thing, I guess, I should point out is, like, my sides, there's always, I find on, on the sides I do because I don't work on a mold, right? I don't, I don't clamp everything down to a mold. I kind of form it by hand and, and all that. And, of course, with time, my skill level is getting better, right? And when I run my hand here, I can feel a, a minute waviness. Again, it's not affecting the structure or sound or anything. I just want to make sure that's clear that you can feel that. I mean, I can sort of feel it on most of my instruments if I'm really, really sensitive to it. Um, so there's that on that side. Let's see on the other side. Uh, this one's a bit. This one's a bit smoother. This one is. You, know, you can f always feel slight inconsistencies for sure. Um, and it's always in the lower. On this one, it's the lower bout where you can feel it. But it's mostly on the other side that faces up while you're playing. Um, so there's that, and the other thing is I want to point out, let's see if you can see that, the upper bout, do you see, okay, see the upper bout, it, exaggerating, it's, it's angled a little, it's hard, it's, perspective's difficult with the video, but I think maybe you can tell that the upper bout here angles down a touch, see that? Um, just, just so it's clear. I don't think the other side's like that, though. No, the other side's pretty much straight on. Yeah, anyway, so these are the things I learned from. Again, doesn't affect the sound or strength structure and all that. Just want to make sure it's all clear, you know? Anyway. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'm not sure what price I'll put on it. It'll be quite a bit less, I think. And, as usual, all my guitars come with a Visit Nut case, the, their more basic version, which is still a beautiful case. Um, yeah, if, if you don't want the case, I can, I'll just take the cost of the case down. I get a, a really, I get a, a discount from the company, being a, a luthier, I get a special rate, so I can get those cases at a cheaper rate. So it's good for my people that want my guitars and stuff. But if, if you don't want a case, like if you're local and have a case, psh, no problem, just drop it down the $470 that it costs. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Red Mountain Cedar, Engelman Spruce Top. Um, really beautiful grain. Beautiful wavy, almost flamey grain, you know? Yeah. <laughs>
Nice. What now? What's now? How about... How about we retune it? This... I just did a video with my other guitar. I just finished. And... Brand new strings. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, friction pegs on this too. Like all my all my guitars with pegs on them, I can install geared pegs, either peg heads or the Whitner pegs. Whitner geared pegs and um, what have you? A person would like. I personally really like the the friction pegs. I can totally understand why someone would prefer geared pegs though, or machines, classical type machines. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I'll talk about that sort of thing more when I'm doing the close ups. <laughs> videos right not I'm not auditioning for performances but if you want me to do some performing let me know and I'll do a proper video for you sense of it uh, yeah yep. okay 
Thanks for having a look.